When the night is darkest and I feel weary, I'm not alone, cause you are My name is Jacob, or as I like to call myself, the Puzzle Master. Confused by a conundrum? Call on me. Muddled by a mystery? I'm your muse. Perplexed by a perturbing problem? Ponder no longer, for I, the Puzzle Master, am here to bring you hope. Hope is believing that something good can come out of something bad. And it's a good thing I'm here because, oh. What have we here? It looks like an ordinary box. But wait, what have we here? The one and only perplexing enigmatical puzzle box 
for hints and questions, send an email to the following address, puzzlebox, uh, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> hints. Questions? <laughs> I need no hints. I have no questions because I am the Puzzle Master. <laughs> this puzzle should be no match for me. Just a few flips of the knob, a few turns of this circle thing, and uh, voila, here we go. Okay, well, okay, let me try a few knobs. Oh, keys, put the keys in. This is, this is, this is the, the missing ingredient. You turn the wheel, you spin the knob, hit the key a little bit, say something nice to the box, you're a really nice box, and voila! Okay. <laughs> oh. Oh, uh, well, you know, no matter. There's a... There's a solution to whatever am I doing right now. Okay. You turn it, and you open that, and then you do... That's what I was... Then you do the... You do the, the key, rub your elbow on it, and sniff it twice. <laughs> and then... This really shouldn't be this hard for the for the puzzle master. Oh, I I I I I, I don't understand. I, I I I haven't I haven't given up. I haven't given up. In today's story, we'll hear about one of Jesus's disciples who was having trouble understanding what was going on. But did he give up? Voila! Well, okay. No, no, <laughs> no. He did not give up. He asked for help. Not that I need help or anything like that, because I am the Puzzle Master. No? Puzzle Master! Puzzle Master! I'll see you soon. Voila! Come on, okay. The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of John, chapter 20. Verses 19 through 29. On the first Easter Sunday, before anyone knew to call it Easter, Jesus' disciples gathered together behind closed doors. Thomas paced the room, Peter and John and the others sat at the table, but no one was very hungry. I tell you, the tomb was completely empty, just like Mary told us. No, not empty, the, the linen cloths were still there. Thomas stopped pacing. I don't get it. Why would someone steal his body, but leave the cloths behind? They didn't. That's the point. You mean you believe, Mary, that she saw Jesus alive? Why would she lie to us? I don't know. Everything's upside down. None of us has slept. They could come for us at any minute. Like anyone, Thomas felt it must be a closed case. There was no point in debating. I'm with Mary. What about you, Peter? Well, there's Lazarus. He was dead and Jesus called him out alive. We all saw it. Thomas started pacing again. I can't take this. I gotta get some fresh air. Be careful, okay? I'm not marching into the temple court or anything. Just taking a walk. No one spoke. They had already gone over and over again the events of the past few days and the things Mary had told them. I believe Mary. I, I think he's alive. If it's true, won't he be angry? We all just deserted him and I, uh, I... Uh... Suddenly, with no sound, no movement, a man stood among them. <gasps> Jesus! May peace be with you. As the disciples stared in awe and shock, Jesus raised his hands to show them his side. Marks burned bright on his skin where the nails had been driven, 
and where a soldier's sword had pierced him. Jesus, I... Jesus smiled at each of his friends in turn. The Father has sent me, so now I am sending you. When Jesus left as quickly as he had come, his friends stared at each other. Then John leapt to his feet, unable to contain his joy. It's true. It's really true. Thomas slipped back inside the room. What's true? We've seen the Lord. Jesus was right here in this room. He didn't need to open the door. He just showed up. Whoa. Hold on. You all saw him? Yes. Yeah, we yeah. saw him with saying. our own eyes. You guys, it's just wishful thinking. You think all of us made this up? I just can't wrap my mind around it. Not until I see the nail marks in his hands. I must put my finger where the nails were. I must put my hand in his side. Only then will I believe. All week, Thomas refused to waver or listen to the other disciples. Just stop. He died. It was terrible. The following Sunday, the disciples gathered again behind locked doors. This time, though, excitement rippled through the room. Did you hear? Jesus showed up on the road to Emmaus. What? Well, maybe he'll appear again this week. You guys, enough. But even as Thomas protested, suddenly, someone else stood in the room with them. <gasps> May peace be with you. Jesus smiled at Thomas and held out his hands. He knew every word that Thomas had spoken to his friends. Put your finger here. See my hands? Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas felt a deep peace and great joy surging through him. My Lord and my God, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen me, but still have believed. Thomas was eyewitness to the unbelievable. Jesus was alive. And Jesus didn't shame Thomas for his doubts or questions. Instead, Jesus lovingly answered Thomas and showed that no question is too big for Jesus. Oh, hi. I wasn't going to cheat or anything. Okay. Okay, I was. I, I, didn't, I didn't want you to know that I couldn't figure out this puzzle. Sometimes it's hard to admit when you don't know something. Thomas didn't have a problem admitting it. He didn't know how it was possible for Jesus to come back from the dead. But instead of keeping that to himself, he said it out loud. Thomas asked for proof. Then, Jesus showed up and patiently gave Thomas the proof he was looking for. It's okay to have questions. <laughs> I have a lot of questions. Questions about that box. How do you open? Questions about life. Like, how does glue not stick to the inside of the bottle? Questions about God. Like, if God can do anything, why doesn't God stop bad things from happening? Here's the thing. I don't know the answers to all of the questions, but I do know that God knows everything. God knows how many stars are in the sky or how many hairs are on your head. And God is bigger than all your questions. That's the one thing to remember today. Whatever happens, remember God is bigger than your questions. When you have questions or even a doubt, it doesn't mean you're doing anything wrong. It just means you're human and can't see everything God does. Now, to open this box once and for all. Oh, where did I put the, uh, that card? It's a little, it's a little white card. I don't know if you saw it. I've got a lot of questions. Uh, card? It was just a little white card. I don't know if you saw which way I threw it. Card? Card? Little, uh, it's just a little white card and I threw it 
I've got, I've got an arm on me, so 